rocket launchers, tanks, ballistic missiles, and a brand new long-range hypersonic missile. North Korea has been brandishing its military might for all the world to see. Well, this grandiose display of power marked the 76th anniversary of the country's ruling Workers' Party. Meanwhile, children and elderly people are facing possible starvation, and 75,000 Christians are locked up in prison camps across the country. George Thomas has the details. A former North Korean high-ranking intelligence official says the regime of President Kim Jong-un, desperate to make cash, resorted to drug deals, weapon sales and terror in order to maintain his tight grip on the Hermit Kingdom. Kim Kong Song, breaking his silence for the first time after defecting seven years ago, telling BBC News that the young 37-year-old dictator is eager to prove himself as a warrior to his people and the world. That warrior-like spirit on display as Kim and his top leaders watched bare-chested North Korean soldiers break through layers of bricks and glass as others performed various unusual martial arts-like routines, marking the 76th anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party. North Korean state media saying the strength of these soldiers was, quote, bestowed upon them by their dear leader, Kim Jong-un. This week, North Korea put on one of its largest displays of military hardware and advanced weapons in decades. His uh, arsenal is becoming more sophisticated. Flanked by rocket launchers, tanks and intercontinental ballistic missiles, including this new long-range hypersonic missile, Kim Jong-un vowed to build an invincible military to counter America. All of these efforts, uh, you know, trying to accomplish multiple, uh, multiple goals uh, with different missile systems. North Korea tested several nuclear-capable weapons in September that could reach targets in South Korea and Japan, including U.S. military bases there. The effort there is to, you know, in a conflict or in a near conflict, uh, to give the United States uh, a pause or pause uh, the United States coming to South Korea or, or, or Japan's defense. Meanwhile, North Korea's economy and people continue to suffer. The United Nations warning that children and elderly people now face possible starvation. This is a regime that, that does not care about the North Korean people. If they did, they, do, they would not waste money and resources on these weapon systems. All this as the regime continues to torture and imprison people of faith. Those charged with Christianity often face summary executions or are forced to live out the rest of their lives inside political prisoner camps. A new report details how North Korea's secret police are often rewarded when they arrest Christians. One victim who was arrested for the possession of a Bible was detained in a solitary confinement, starved and beaten with a metal rod used for cleaning rifles. Alarming, pretty alarming. According to Open Doors, North Korea is the most dangerous place in the world to be a Christian. Some 75,000 North Korean Christians are reportedly in prison camps across the country. Gordon and Terry? Well, George, tell us what a hypersonic missile is. That's a, that's a new one on me. I, I, I hear reports Russia's working on one. China supposedly tested one back in August. Well, well what are these things? And, well, they go really, really fast. And in fact, the Chinese just this weekend uh, uh, t tested one of these hypersonic uh, missiles. In, uh, in fact, not just this weekend, they reported that they, they, they did one of these launches back in August and literally goes around the world, uh, around the Earth and hits its target right uh, spot on. And North Korea unveiled one of these uh, uh, during the, uh, 40, the 76th anniversary this past week and then also tested it back in August. But this is supposed to be a game changer in the region. The question is whether these hypersonic missiles can, as it goes into the orbit and then it returns hitting its target, whether it can uh, withstand the heat uh, of, uh, as it makes its re-entry uh, into the Earth's orbit. That's the big question, whether, you know, the, the U.S. Army said back in uh, 2020 that the, that the North Korean regime has currently between 20 to 60 nuclear bombs and the ability to manufacture close to about uh, six new bombs each year. 
all of this happening while this country continues to deal with a collapsing economy, a lack of uh, food for its uh, for its people, and it spends more on its on its military, uh, Gordon, as a ratio of the gross domestic uh, product uh, than any other of the 170 countries that the State Department monitors right now. Well, George, describe what life would be like for North Korea's Christians who've not been discovered and taken to prison camps. Yeah, over the last 25 years, as I've been reporting on North Korea and have had a chance to meet with uh, several defectors uh, who moved to either Taiwan, China, or South Korea, describe uh, a life where there is uh, absolute fear. There is no trust with members of the family because if you become a Christian, you don't know if your son, your daughter, your mother, your father uh, is going to feel the pressure to, to rat you out and to tell the authorities that uh, they have or a member of your family has become a Christian. Uh, you know, when they walk around, they don't, you know, we had a chance to go to uh, churches this past week, uh, this past weekend. You know, we can't, they can't sing loudly. They can't pray. They can't close their eyes. They have to, you know, in some cases, they drive around Pyongyang and other cities in their cars. They pray, they sing. But it's a very, very difficult environment to practice your faith. Open Doors uh, says for the past 18 years, it has been the number one worst place in the world for Christians. Well, how can we pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in North Korea? Uh, you know, Gordon, what I've heard, whether it's from Southeast Asia to the Middle East, those who endure um, horrific uh, situations for their faith, they always say, you know, George, don't pray uh, that the persecution will leave, but instead, Help us uh, pray that we will have the spiritual backbone to withstand, to continue to talk about Jesus Christ, to talk about His love. But don't ask for the persecution to leave necessarily, but we need to have the spiritual spine to continue sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, that's some amazing courage. I'm still going to ask for it to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to No, I don't want the persecution there. Uh, it would be great if Korea could become one nation again. That would be wonderful. Well, George, thanks for joining us. You can always get the latest news and more by downloading the CBN News app.